Hello my soccer universe for the Premier League review. This time it's the third one and a little bit Eredivisie and as you can see I rearranged the Eredivisie and have two teams now. Gets the spot here to the right. Ajax ahead of PSV in the standings and then here the projected standings for the top six. And everyone else is being put here. I probably should put a picture of this on uh, Twitter and Facebook but let's see. Uh, Headlines first. I think I want to go now this way. Uh, very, the first three thoughts that I had are Liverpool keep on grinding out results, although they are not really looking all that convincing. As we will see, they're top of the table at the moment with a huge clash coming up. Uh, second thing, it seems like the Aston Villa Everton magic is over and also Leeds is getting a little bit found out. So uh, careful. We have to see where this is going. And then the last one, uh, yeah, Bale is back. Bale scored, so those are the three headlines. And I have also one from the Dutch league. Alkmaar can win. Alkmaar finally can win. So we'll look at all of these. Um, if we go now to the results of this uh, weekend, we had Wolves getting a relative easy win over Crystal Palace 2-0. Manchester City, honestly, uh, yeah, typically Manchester City performance dom dominating proceedings, pro proceedings, but need a Carl Walker goal in the 28 to beat Sheffield United. Um, they cannot really pile, pile on, but it was not really needed either. Uh, similar story, actually, I have to say, for Chelsea, except that they can pile on. Uh, Burnley gave them a scare early on, uh, where the streak of Mendy was in danger of finally conceding a goal while playing for the, um, Chelsea and I think that first goal scorer will become a famous one at least for a small uh, portion uh, for, for a small period of time uh, but you know Akim Ziyech makes a second goal for Chelsea uh, assisted by Tammy Abraham and then all the flood gets open Zuma heads one in the 63rd and then even Timo, Timo Werner gets on the score sheet. Uh, it was actually utter dominance in a way without being too convincing. I think Burnley will have a hard time this season staying up, uh, as is probably true for Sheffield United. We have to see how this is going. Then we come to Liverpool, uh, who go down to through defensive error. Uh, Joe Gomez is playing, uh, heading the ball straight to Fornals, who can put it in the internet. And that's the typical thing that I, I know we had it last uh, weekend against Sheff Sheffield United, but it seems like all the time that Liverpool finds themselves a goal down and then they need to recover from that. In the end, it's a penalty in the 42nd minute. Salah uh, co converts, then they pile on the pressure. Shakiri come on, Jota come on, and that actually proves to be the difference. Jota has already a goal disallowed because of a foul in the build-up. Yes, Mane went in there a little bit with too much... Uh, for so it was a foul on the goalkeeper this would have been a 77th but then um, a really nice attacking play where they start on the right side and the ball moves to a to left and then Shakiri plays a super deep uh, pass into the box where Mane is standing but he immediately uh, no I'm not gonna take it and so Jota just can take over and puts it the ball basically doesn't change direction. He, he just gives a four, puts it into the net. Um, Salah, of course, on the other side was, hey, I'm here. But no, Jota takes a goal. And I have to say, Jota seems to be like a great transfer for Liverpool. And yeah, we have to see how defensively they will um, develop overall, because that's maybe the one uh, worrying thing uh, for, Liv for Liverpool. Also, I'm curious to see how they will line up now next week. Uh, against Atalanta and then um, Manchester City as yes, we will see so big one coming up uh, so those were the Saturday games uh, on Sunday we had a it sounds like a great game 3-4 between Aston Villa and Southampton Southampton was up 4-4-0 uh, Ward Prowse uh, two free kicks Carbon copy of each other I think he has he assisted the first one then Dan Ings makes it 4-0 afterwards Aston Villa can pull Two goals back in stoppage time. Uh, I think they had before also a few good chances, but a little bit too late. So again, another team that had a great, great start now, kind of being found out a little bit. Same thing can be said for Everton. But that was, to be honest, Newcastle is the 
the stealing side in, 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 in a way. Everton was largely a better team. Robin Olsen getting a start ahead of Pickford. Kind of understandable, I want to say. Uh, to at least give, give, give him a little, a little bit of a break because uh, he seemed to be calamitous for Everton. Um, as I said, Everton mm, having more, more of the game but not really being that great and then a Callum Wilson penalty uh, tilts the game in Newcastle's favor. Callum Wilson adds a sex, second one and very late Calvert Lewin in the 91st pulls one back but there was not really a chance to, e to equalize so yeah Everton hmm, the good start seems to be over there's not much I can say about United Arsenal except that Arsenal wins uh, thanks to penalty where Pogba made the, uh, the foul the, I think United hit once the post and that was that it was a rather boring uh, game that I fortunately didn't see but from all I could say it was a really a non-remarkable game let's put it that way um, Spurs against Brighton. Spurs came out flying and take the lead through a cane penalty. The circumstances were maybe a little bit contentious because, you know, first the ref gives the foul and then turns out that Kane is standing with his feet on the uh, line of the penalty area. So it is a penalty. I can, s by the rules, every, 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 everything fine, but I think if the referee wanted to give a penalty before, uh, yeah, he probably would have, have given it. But at that time, the penalty was deserved. But then Tottenham hangs too much back and actually Brighton gets into the game. And Brighton is, for me, the unlucky team of the season at, at the moment because they always have nice performances where you actually feel that the, that, that the team is playing quite well, but they cannot get it done. This time they get an equalizer through Lamptey, but in the build-up there was a very clear foul on Heuberg, where you actually see the replay. And this is what I, I don't get. I just saw the, I just only, only saw highlights, but you can see there is a foul. The player is going right into Heuberg. He, he's not getting the ball because the ball doesn't take any deflection. So how that you can look at VAR and then say this was not a foul. Pretty tough call, I have to say. But uh, the goal, again, like the first one, was probably deserved at the moment. But then uh, Tottenham again flipped the switch. Bale came on, and three minutes later, um, cross from Region, and Bale scores. Uh, it's kind of uh, ironic that a Real Madrid, former Real Madrid player, assists a former Real Madrid player. I think then Tottenham were the better team and got a deserving draw. Uh, Fulham. 2-0 against West Brom gets the first win of the season and I did not see much I saw I just let let's say 2 lead at the half they uh leads pulled one back but then Leicester I think the Chamber Warriors got the third and then that was that four one win for Leicester um kind of emphatic there as well um then if we if you look at the standings now uh due to these results we see Liverpool on top a uh, goal forwards and again and again. I mean, there are a lot of that is this Aston Villa game that they lost seven to. Uh, but other than that, Liverpool grind out results, get results, and that's why they are top of the table, although not looking like that. Leicester also there, uh, and Spurs getting in there. Uh, Everton drop dropping now. I mean, personally, I think this will be a wide open league. So uh, even well, when I look at the percentages. Um, here, this is taking much into account that, that the ratings will stay constant, but you know, injuries will play a problem, and I think it is going to haunt Liverpool sooner or later. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid, and so you need a deep, deep squad, and maybe Spurs has that, City should have that, but they also have some defensive frailties. But at the moment, if you look at the City is down, but they have a game in hand with 14 points, they would be right around third place, so right in the running there. Um, they are 60%. Favorite, favorite at the moment, uh, Liverpool only 30 percent. Uh, both are, of course, favorite for the Champions League spots at the moment. Chelsea is giving a chance. I don't see the, uh, they have the quality score, but they have to find times so that I actually think it is Leicester or Spurs that actually could do something in there. It's just a gut feeling that I have, uh, there for the Champions League spots. We see, um, Chelsea, of course, as the number three force, and then it's a three-way tie, and you can see it here. I have Arsenal ahead of United and ahead of Spurs. Um, it is very tight, and Leicester is not too far off, and now Leicester had to be relegated to 
the non top six spot right up here uh, in my <laughs> standing so uh, kind of in interesting there as well as for relegation despite Fulham winning uh, Fulham and West Brom those two are still the ones um, favored to go down but Sheffield United and Burnley getting redder and redder and I think it will the relegation spots will be between those four teams one of them will survive i don't see anyone else really getting in there um west ham i also have to say they lost to liverpool to, to liverpool but um everyone thought that they will have a horrible october uh, slash beginning of november but they actually got quite a few points out of that so kudos to west ham there too. In the next round, of course, everything is overshadowed by the big matchup City against Liverpool Sunday at 5 30. Um, probably still the two best teams in there. I think Everton Man United is a sleeper mad matchup. Both need Kakar's win and also Arsenal Villa, I think, is not uh, that uninteresting. Uh, so those would be my picks for games to watch. Uh, Leicester Wolves, maybe. That's, not, that's also one. The nice thing that I like is that all games end on Sunday thanks to the international break, which I'm honestly awaiting a little bit because I need a little bit of a pause in this crazy match schedule that we currently have. In the Eredivisie, I did not see any highlights now, but I want to point out the last results. AZ can finally win. They had five draws in, in a row. Ajax only scoring five goals and conceding two, so that was kind of uh, unheard of. And see, Venlo can not concede that many goals against Groningen, Groningen probably 2-1 only. Uh, Vitesse, uh, as we we'll see, will stay also on top with a 3-1 win against Willem Dway. Uh, Feyenoord getting a nasty win at Emmen as well, PSV against Den Haag, relatively easy. Herrenveen beats Sparta Rotterdam 4-0. So top of the standings, it all seems Ajax, but look at the points. Vitesse and Ajax are level on points, it's just Ajax has the way superior goal difference and I actually think that Ajax will uh, eventually take over. Eredivisie also has many goals, over 3.3. Uh, seven on av average is roughly uh, like the Premier League, which is 3.25, so a little bit higher there, but Ajax did a lot of work there for to boost it up. Um, not many changes, I have to say. I realized I had the last week's table was wrong because I had two results uh, not conceded, so this is now the correct table. Uh, I made sure that ev ev everything is all right. We have two unbeaten teams with Feyenoord and AZ, but that doesn't help much, I have to say. Uh, also, going quickly back to the Premier League, every team has been beaten once, but there are still two uh, teams that have not found, uh, three teams that have, have found a victory with West Brom, Sheffield and Burnley. Uh, in the Netherlands, uh, next round, Utrecht, Ajax. Uh, I'm all looking first for Ajax, then Vitesse against Emmen, so I think those two will stay on top. Fener Groningen will be interesting. I wish that Arjen Robben comes back uh, soon. And then PSV, Willem Dway. Um, nice southern matchup there as well. Herrenveen, AZ is a nice northern matchup. So yeah, that was it for, uh, how to say, Northwestern <laughs> Europe, Premier League and Eredivisie. Let me know what you think, how things will be going in these two leagues, uh, whether you agree with the assessment of the match reports that I made. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye!